late season corn insects, Darren. Which ones are we talking about and what are we going to do about them? Well, you know, there are a number of different bugs that can impact your corn fields later on in the season. We talk about things like corn rootworm beetles clipping off silks. We look at corn leaf aphids that are way up at the top of the plant. You look at corn borers and a lot of guys say, well, corn borers, I've been using BT corn. Yeah, you know what? There are corn borers still around and just plant some refuge corn and you'll find out real quick. Corn borer is still an issue and there are other bugs too from stock year to year. Borer, yep, stock borer for one that we've always had around the outside edges of our fields. Yeah, there are a number of different insects out there. So the number one thing we always encourage you to do with insects is don't just automatically treat, it's always take a look at your fields. So this corn leaf aphid, that's kind of where I wanted to start because that's something that you say, oh, come on, it's just a bunch of little bugs on there. What harm are they really gonna do? Well, especially if you are in drier conditions, you're going for higher yields, things like that. Corn leaf aphids could take 5, 10, 15 bushels off your yield, just bam, like that. Well, here's one of the problems with corn leaf aphids. They generally like to be towards the top of the plant. So they're right up around the tassel. They're right up around your ears. I mean, just buy some sweet corn from a roadside stand, and chances are you'll see some corn leaf aphids once you start peeling away the outside layer or two you know, of leaves around that ear. So corn leaf aphids can be annoying and they can also be an impactful on those upper leaves of the corn plant that are gonna catch that sunlight energy to finish out your corn ears at the end of the year. So yeah, they can mess with pollination. They can mess with your late season ear fill. There's a lot of problems, especially when you get quite a few of them. If your plants are under stress, you're probably looking at just 50 to 100 per plant is the threshold. If your plants are under absolutely no stress, everything is perfect, you might be able to get by with 200 to 400 aphids aphids per plant before you start having a major issue. Well, when corn is at these price levels, Brian, I just don't understand why you wouldn't be aggressive going after it. Well, Especially I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why is because you've got to hire a plane to come out and do it. It's right. not something where you That's say, true. well, I'm already out there spraying my herbicide. I'll just throw it in. But there are a lot of farmers who are automatically now spraying fungicide late in the season. So they're already getting the plane out anyway. It's the right timing for spraying corn leaf aphids. So that's the point where before that plane does come out, you want to scout your fields. If you've got a bunch of leaf leaf aphids, it only costs maybe three or four bucks to throw in, let's say some fanfare or something like that, generic bifenthrin, and you can get great control of that as well as something we haven't mentioned yet, Darren, spider mites. Well, if we get dry again, <laughs> you know, and you look back at 2012, this was an issue all over the place. We saw spider mites where guys had never seen them before, hadn't seen them for years, and bam, we get a drought year and spider mites become a problem again. And that's why product selection becomes important too. You know, anytime you're going to be going out across the field, Make sure you're checking to look for bugs, you know, no matter what crop it is, because you can almost always add an insecticide to whatever else you're doing for just a few bucks. But you say, wait a second, I've got spider mites out there. How are they different? What products work on spider mites that you may not be thinking about? Yeah, so most of the pyrethroids, things like Warrior, Silencer, Declare, Asana, they're awesome on just about every insect you're going to have in corn and soybeans, except they don't stop spider mites. In fact, they will flare up spider mites because they're going to kill some beneficial insects unfortunately and if they kill everything else in the field that just leaves spider mites to really thrive. So the main two things that you can use would be something like Lorsban or capture or the generic fanfare as Brian mentioned. Okay, so with those spider mites, they do flare up when you have drier conditions. The reason why is normally they're going to get a disease when the conditions are relatively moist out there. So we'll see, this year started out wet. Of course, last spring in our area started out wet too and all of a sudden we had drought. So who knows what's gonna happen here in the next few weeks. Now one other thing I'd mentioned on products, there are specific miticides, but typically they cost a little bit more money than what your lores ban or capture or fanfare do. And that's why we mentioned those products first. Well, the good news here is when you are or if you are out spraying fungicide, at full tassel. You can get those corn leaf aphids. You can get spider mites. You can also get the next bug we wanted to discuss, and that is adult corn rootworm beetles. Anytime you're seeing adult corn rootworm beetles out in your field, and I don't care what kind they are, if they're northerns or westerns or southerns or whatever, it doesn't make any difference to me. What those guys like to do is go clip off silks on your ears. So as your corn ears are forming and the silks come out, those rootworm beetles, for whatever reason, go right after it. And I've seen fields across the country where guys have had so many rootworm beetles out in their 
fields, they've literally clipped the silks down to just about nothing and we didn't get pollination on the ears. And there's nothing more sad to me than looking at a cornfield that has all kinds of potential and there are no kernels on the ears because those silks got clipped off. Now this is especially an issue if you're going to plant corn in that same field again next year because what do you think those adult corn rootworm beetles are going to do shortly after they come out? Well, pretty soon they're going to mate, they're going to lay eggs, and now you've got a major issue going into next year. So what a lot of farmers are doing today, in addition to using insecticide, using BT corn to control these rootworms, they're controlling the rootworm beetles when they come out later in the season with insecticide, and all the products we've already mentioned, even the Silencer Declare, the Fanfare Lorsban, all of them will control adult corn rootworm beetles for very little money. So yeah, it's really inexpensive and also keep an eye on your other crops like soybeans for example because some of these adult corn rootworm beetles will move into those soybean fields. They'll lay eggs there as well and have corn rootworm larvae feeding on your corn that goes in those fields next year. Okay, so we also mentioned corn borers, we mentioned stock borers. There's several other insects. A lot of these insects can be controlled by BT's stock borer gets to be big a lot of times. It's out in the grassy areas of the field and then it will move in. So you usually see stock borers just right along the borders of fields. So that's where to look for those. With corn borer, they can blow in anywhere. Most of these bugs can blow in anywhere, but stock borer is real particular. It's gonna come out of grass typically and affect your borders. And I was just gonna make a comment too. Anytime you have these borers that get inside the plant, you can control them halfway is decent when they're outside or when they're still in the <laughs> right, egg stage, right. but once they're in the middle of the stock, you really can't get them. So you have to be careful, you have to be scouting uh, and keep an eye for those bugs. And as Brian is mentioning with stock borers, uh, when you're spraying insecticide, if you're just spraying insecticide, we have a lot of guys now that like to go around the end rows yep. and spray a little bit out into the grass too to make sure they're controlling grasshoppers and stock borers and some of these pests that can move into your fields. Well, these insects can do a lot of damage in your field if left untreated, as can our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 